Nigeria's Center for Disease Control has said that cholera cases are increasing nationwide with at least 31 states affected. We'll look at, we'll look at the unfolding situation and the way forward. Also on The Breakfast, the Central Bank of Nigeria has announced the introduction of National Domestic Card Scheme. Stay with us to know what exactly this is about and what it means for the Nigerian economy if we have a discussion on this ahead. And in Off the Press, we bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. We're back at the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Very good morning to you. It's Tuesday, a brand new Tuesday. And of course, uh, we have interesting discussions uh, all through the program from now till uh, about uh, 10 minutes to 9 a.m. My name is Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. And I am Messier Bokbo. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. All right. We'll start things off with a look at what's been trending uh, in the social conversations or the conversation on the social space uh, between where we were last here. <laughs> And now, and uh, the new one, um, people like to talk, you know, messy people like to, you know, talk about what doesn't concern them. Like we say in Nigeria, it concerns you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the latest thing people are talking about, uh, about that does not concern them, uh, happens to be somebody getting a wife. And the reason people are talking about uh, this person is because he is getting a sixth wife. And that is the... Uh, uh, that's the crux of the matter. He's getting his sixth wife. And uh, I mean, it, it would not have been an issue, but I think the number of wives is the problem. Uh, but you see, he's a traditional ruler. And we're talking about the O Neofife, uh, who is the person in question. Now, when it comes to traditional rulers, I, I tread cautiously and carefully because there are various traditions and various cultural uh, uh, considerations, and I'm not aware of everything. So I, I don't want to fall foul of those. You know, traditional institution in Africa is uh, held in high esteem. You know, so um, I, I would I would say uh, very little on that. But before we get to the only of okay, yeah, I would say the very uh, very few things about that. Uh, keep my words short uh, and simple. Um, he is Oba Adeye Enito Ogunwosi, and he was set to take a sixth wife. Yesterday, Messi does one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, I mean, he's been the object of public attention, especially after he took a wife, a very beautiful wife who happened to be a prophetess, and then she left him. I think that was the most public one. But his first wife also left him as well. Yesterday, we learned that uh, Oba Enito Ogunwusi uh, was set to take his sixth wife, Temitope Adeshegun. Um, the announcement was made by the only spokesperson, Moses Ola Fare, uh, in a Facebook post on Sunday. The monarch had on Thursday, October 20, married his fifth wife. That's four days before he married his sixth wife. His fifth wife, um, the founder of African Fashion Week. Uh, I'm sure you know about African Fashion Week, Mercy. Ronke Ade Milui, um, she's the great granddaughter of the 48th. Oni of Ife Ajagun Ademi Lui. So there's a connection there. Um, so four days after he married his fifth wife, he was said to uh, be taking his sixth wife. Um, now his sixth wife to be, uh, Adeshagun, is a princess. Now people need to understand that all these people have, are not just waking up to go marry a monarch. They are somewhere in the system. And uh, she hails from Ijebulan. All right, so um, that's it. So so in, in a Facebook post, this is what the, um, the spokesperson of uh, uh, the ONI announced on Sunday. He said, um, tomorrow is D-Day. That was yesterday. After his marriage to Naomi, uh, remember Naomi, the, the, the yeah, Sekola, yeah, failed in December 2021. The monarch has married uh, five different women in less than two months. You know, so it's like after you look, you know, you lift your head up, you look down at your phone again, another one has come up. You <laughs> lift your head up, you go to the kitchen to eat your beans, you come back, another one. Uh, it's quite interesting, but he's a revered monarch. 
uh, personally hold him in high esteem. I like, you know, the, the freshness is brought to, you know, such a position in, in, in Nigeria. And I will be the last person to judge him. But um, the, the, five of, uh, the five different wives he's married, you know, he'll be married in less than two months, uh, are Miriam Anako, who is now his wife. He married her on September 6th, you know, just uh, last month. Elizabeth Aki Mudai. Uh, we also have Phillips, Toby Lola Phillips, who, was, who he married on October 9. Ashley Adegoke, whom he married on October 14. And Ronke Ademilui, who he married uh, on October 20, 2022. I think if you look at the proximity of the marriage, um, the only person I remember who, was, uh, who did more than this was Afela Aniko Lakbo Kuti. I'm not saying the only should be compared to Fela, but I'm saying, if I want to remember someone who married a lot of people on one day, uh, I think it was Fela who did that. So, congratulations to the only as he picks his sixth wife and um, may his uh, reign, or his, his reign be long and, and successful. But I hear, Mercy, I hear that uh, uh, somebody is applying to be wife number seven. I saw it online. I don't know if it's true or if it's just a... Uh, Hopes. Remember, just like you rightly mentioned, uh, the issue of tradition, culture, uh, is something that you have to, you know, be very cautious and careful. However, we live in a dispensation where there's no law that states that, you know, you cannot have more than one wife. I mean, that's almost the practice. And in some parts, you find that, that some people can actually marry more than one. And that's because of, you know, maybe a certain religion or does it might be the tradition. And so, um, that that's also on the one hand, right? So it, it might just also be that uh, I saw a particular tweet that talked about oh, the palace of the Ife or the Oni of Ife is big enough to accommodate a hundred women. And what exactly, <laughs> what exactly could it really mean? These women are not complaining that they don't want to be married. It's not like he pointed a gun at them and all of that. But the question would be, uh, is this in agreement with the tradition? What's a, what does the law talks about? Uh, can he, how many wives? Is this stipulated in the, in the tradition of the law uh, that he's expected to marry uh, a certain number or he's expected to have a certain number of wives, maybe two or three or thereabout? And in cases like this, it's the same thing with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. When you begin to look at the Constitution and you look at the lacunas, then a lot of people probably might act, you know, in that direction. But what does it say there? It might just be the fact that the only go heartbroken and he feels like, hey, he needs to acquire more wives. <laughs> he, need, he needs to... <laughs> he needs to... <laughs> I use the word acquire because that's what it feels like. So he needs to get, you know, more wives and or more women around him. And so, so that if one leaves, he doesn't have to, to be bothered. Mm. <laughs> he has, mm. you know, like five, six, seven, eight. Mm. All, I mean, I don't know what it's going to be like, but it's, it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, and I, I, you know, when, when it comes to situation, to like situation like this, Mercy, I mean, I don't know, maybe if there's a monarch holding a function and you happen to pass him by. <laughs> I want her. <laughs> Let's move away so is, from it. Is, is it no, is but it? if we look at the profile, um, if you look at the profile of this particular wife that he took yesterday, and a lot of people anticipated, she is, you know, well read, uh, highly placed. Tell me, talk about I'm talking about. Mm. If you okay, the, the one from yesterday, right? Yes, yes. If you look at her profile, oh, I, 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 I can yeah. actually have. Is she, is she the one who has? Um, uh, uh, master's degree from the UK? Of course. Okay, because there's another one who also has um, a bachelor's degree, but she's a beauty queen. So there are a lot of them, but uh, if, it, you, if you look at the honestly, choice of honestly, the new it's, it's, it's like really confusing for me to keep so, up. So if, to keep we, up. we can't keep up. It's, been hard, it's even, hard for me to keep up. Even when, up. You, say, I know, even, even when you talk about keeping up with the Kardashians, it's, it's not as this. You know, so I, I think that it will be a lot to keep up. It's not just one person that we're talking about, but we're talking about uh, several persons here. I mean, but, there's but, a lot. But, One, two, three, four, five, yes. six, seven. Yes. Mercy, it's, it's, it's been hard for me to keep up, you know. And um, but I knew that uh, amongst the last one was um, a, a master's degree holder from UK, uh, an accountant. And no one is a beauty queen or something like that. I, I saw somewhere. People write all sorts of things, you know, but she's a bachelor's degree. But um, we will say congratulations to the married couple and I'm happy in life. But 
the question on my mind is, how many more? Well, we don't know. Right? Yeah, and, no, no, that's and, the question. And, 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 have you, and, have you and watched you know um, that, um, Aniko Lapo? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Why do you keep asking? No, because me that? Um, you know, sometimes some people. Anyway, let's just leave that. No, but, um, so, so so the thing is, like I rightly mentioned, the question would be: at the end of the day, we're expected to say if you're not acting. Uh, in contrast of the law, if you're not on the other side of the law, so that's what it is. Yeah. So if you it's, look it's at the, because now we're like talking, we hear yeah. say on So 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 like like I I, I stated earlier too. on, when we talk about culture, these are practices, and so we need to know. I, I haven't seen uh, the number a limitation. If there's you know a limit to how many wives mm -hmm. that the only of if can actually get, I don't know if there's a you know, limit. You know, so it means that he can have a, he like can have as many as he wants. It's his entitlement. Like someone said, one of our jingles on this station. You know, you know, this is a topic that is so interesting. We can talk about it for one hour. I, that's, I see why you know, we're dwelling on this. But the question it, I'll <laughs> ask is, how many more? You know, I'm just speculation. You no, know, it, it could be. It could be His, his Royal Highness is, is, is entitled to take as many wives as he wants. You know. as, as long as he does yes. not contravene, you know, the His tradition. Royal Highness is, is a prevailed traditional ruler. Okay. No, no, but it's you know, if, even in the tradition, you know. w we need to also look so. at the tradition. The tradition is not uh, an open. I'm sure that mm -hmm. there are laws for how, if you look at it, how will an uh, the affair be elected? You know, the or need the next one be elected. There's a process. That's what I'm talking about. There's a pro there's a procedure traditionally. Can, so can my limit, question is: Can you limit the number of wives that an Oba can take? No, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I haven't seen a limit in yes, the law. Good. So we're saying in, the same in the thing. In the traditional law. Yes, so as yes. long as he's not so he, he's breaking he's entitled the law, to take as many wives. That's as he what he wants. means. So, because so because we, the law has not stated a limitation, yes, yes. which I haven't seen. It probably might so be he's there. But it's possible wives that, that it's there, and I don't know about it. And then I'm hoping that you so know. So we actually we are in reverence to that. You know, you are in reverence. Yes, that is his entitlement. So we have to be aware of that as having this conversation. He's a traditional ruler, and uh, I like to say we respect the Oba, and uh, it's a very traditional institution. You know, and um, uh, we just wish the married couple happy married life. But as a person, as a person, Mercy, you know, I'm just being honest. The question in my mind is, how many more? He can get as much mm -hmm. as he wants. Mm -hmm. As long it's, as it's, no it's a speculation. It's like saying, I'm just guessing, you know. Yeah, Kofi, you, you, what, what, I think we're still going in circles. Let's go. Let's move, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. The fact that how many more, as long as he's not, he's acting within the laws of, course, of the Constitution. Of course, I'm saying that. Then he, can, that. he can get. It doesn't mean I'm not wondering in my mind, you know. I'm, if I'm he guessing. Wants to, will then he take he, one more, he two more. And these women are not complaining now. So. I don't know why. Not we saying that. Be not saying that. Well, um, let's move away quickly. Another one is that Namdi Kano's uh, appeal, uh, the, the federal government or the appeal court rejects uh, the federal government request for that adjournment. And the Court of Appeal uh, on Monday, that was yesterday, refused to grant the request of the federal government. Uh, that has also caused for a lot of concern uh, for the adjournment in application seeking to, an, a stay of execution of the judgment that set free the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, uh, Namdi Kanu, of the IPOP. Now, so the, the courts, this is it. A lot of people might just be thinking differently, but the court has had earlier said that uh, in the morning because they resumed their session in the afternoon and they had you know spoken to the government and said hey you need to move uh, the issue or the matter uh, to the letter time you know the application uh, they asked the federal government in the morning to move his application or forget it and it feels like you know the federal government uh, was still bent on the morning but you also have the lawyer who said that uh, that particular, he was served a letter on Friday. Uh, I really don't know what that means. And so that's what it is. So, But let's also not forget that the, the appeal court at the time had asked that, you know, Namdi Kanu be discharged, but of course not acquitted. And that's the conversation. That's right there. All right, Mercy, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting situation um, uh, with the... Uh, with the legal processes going on. And I think that um, uh, not a few people had speculated and had guessed that the federal government would head to, uh, the, uh, to the Supreme Court, you know. Um, so, so let's see how it goes. The Court of Appeal refusing to grant the request of the federal government you know, for an adjournment in an action seeking to stay execution, all right, because they will apply 
you know, for stay of execution, it has to be granted. Um, uh, if you have maybe some other appeal going on, you know, somewhere, you have to apply to the court to get that stay of execution um, approved. And it's not uh, granted or given that immediately you appeal that there is automatically a stay of, exec stay of execution. You have to apply and the court has to grant that application. Some people think that, oh, they say, oh, we have applied for, we've appealed the case, so the party should maintain the status quo ante. But that's not the case. You have to actually apply for a state of execution. And then the court that, you know, uh, granted or gave a ruling will consider it. You know, so um, this is where we are. Uh, and uh, the federal government has been asked to move its application or forget about that application. And so they just have to do the needful and they have to comply with the ruling of the Court of Appeal, all right? They have to uh, comply with the ruling of the Court of Appeal. Um, so that's that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I think it's the, the window is open, the, the doors are fully now open for the federal government to comply with the uh, court's decision on Kanu, you know, uh, the doors are fully open now for the federal government to comply with that. You can appeal, but I think what they're saying is that um, uh, while you're appealing, do the needful obey our decision. All right, so that's that. Um, I'm sure we hear some more from Mike, a, 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 a Ifan Age of Foreign, Michael Zekome, SCN, who happens to be the lawyer to, to Kanu in this matter. All right, we have to move on uh, to the next one, which happens to be. Uh, a very interesting situation, Mercy. Mm. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about that? Oh, you, no, you <laughs> go ahead. All right. Um, so this happens to be with uh, uh, to do with the evacuation of of Nigerians from parts of the country. You know uh -huh. what some people had been saying was we've not seen the federal government move out, you know, to evacuate Nigerians uh, from flood affected areas. So far, we have thirty four states in Nigeria affected by flooding. And uh, we wanted to see, you know, an American-style, you know, response by government. You know, the Americans would um, send in the the, the 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 military, you know, the Marines and all those. You have the military engineering corps if they have to repair bridges that have been broken down or destroyed by by the flooding and all that. They are brought and activated. You know, they are activated. So we wanted to see something. Let's see choppers from the Air Force. Let's see boats from the Navy. Uh, let's see. Let's see some some soldiers going uh, into the the flood affected areas to help people out. And uh, what we are seeing is that um, the National Emergency Man Management Agency, in conjunction or collaboration or with the assistance, let's say, of the Nigerian Navy, uh, evacuated some flood affected persons uh, from their communities in rivers and by Elsa states. If you see the pictures, you would see the uh, gigantic trucks that can uh, drive tr through water. It's amazing. It's amazing. They drove through water. These are what you call amphibious vehicles. Mm -hmm. Amphibious vehicles. You can, you can see one of them on your screen. And this one can drive through water. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. These are amphibious vehicles. I think even the Red Cross, they have vehicles that can drive through water. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that have those, um, those kind of like tunnels, you know, mm -hmm. pipes at the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They can drive through water. Mm. Yes. But, but, but yes. So, so, so it, it, people have been commenting to say this is a welcome development. Mercy. Mm. Well, so, so the comment is a welcome development. Uh, it, it would actually go in hand with that conversation that talks about is better late than never. I mean, it's, it's at all at all. They say now winch. That's in our parable. <laughs> That's what we would say. But if you look at it, I remember when we started this conversation right here. And one of the questions that I posed to our, our analyst or our guest at the time was, should the federal government not declare this as a state of emergency? 34 states we're talking about, out of how many states again in Nigeria? 36 plus the federal capital territory. So is this not uh, uh, an emergency? Is this not a, a national issue? Now, when you talk about the declaration of a state of emergency, then it would mean that uh, there's need to suspend the, the nation as a national danger or a disaster in which the government suspends normal constitution, the constitutional order and procedures in order uh, to regain control. The government has not declared this as a state of emergency. And that's why we can't have all of this that you have mentioned, you know, people intervening. Because if the Nigerian government declares these as 
uh, a national danger or a national disaster, state of emergency, then what will mean that we would see not just Nigerians acting, we will not see different bodies intervening, but would also see people from other parts of the country, you know, acting in, in this regard, coming to support. There would be helicopters chopped choppers different parts of the world, though, especially those who are aligning with the Nigerian people, you know, to come to rescue. So at the end of this perception, the government has acted, but how long did it take the government to respond? You know, two weeks, lives. It, it just shows, it's, it's, it's just, uh, it plays premium to how much of importance that we place, you know, on the life of an average or a Nigerian life of people. How much do we value people? You talked about this and in my mind, I'm like, maybe we're too conversant with the movies and the things that we see in the news because that's what happens. Right, because it's expected that the government should have, you know, gotten into action by now, but this is two weeks and we're saying, hey, because, you know, it's better that you didn't act, it's better that you're acting late, but we appreciate what you're doing and that's what it is. So how long will we continue to be reactive and not proactive? And even when the situation has happened, how long did it take us to actually, you know, act in that particular order? I remember once upon a time, uh, maybe because I, I've seen too many movies, and then there was a crime situation. My house was robbed, so the police called. We put up a lot of calls across, you know, to the police, and eventually you had uh, the police arriving. So when the police was at the gate, I, I mean, I was at the forefront of all of this. So I came out in the middle of the, the, the night. So I came out and I asked the police officer. So we're like, oh, we got a call, distress call in a wrong location. So I'm like, this is where it is. But of course, these robbers have actually gone. Uh, they were already there. So they said, okay, okay. They were going to ask, are you not going to come inside? Because I, I was hoping that they would come inside the house, you know, come into the compound and look at all of the stuff. I was expecting some perimeter fencing, you know, so too much of imagination. Too many movies. <laughs> Too many movies. <laughs> Too many movies, and that's the problem. And you the know. expectation, you know, just gets very high. But yes. Kofi, that's what it is. Yes, indeed. Um, like you said, ne better late than never. But you know, I think it's it's too late. It, well, it's better late than never. But you know, <laughs> but it's we, late. We, we we have um, bodies have been washed off. Yes. Uh, so, some some of the things are not within the control of government. Some things, you know, when it comes natu natural disaster, some of it. Coffee, yeah, yes. Coffee, you know so, that sorry, Missy. To... Just oh. to learn, yeah, you know some of it so in this is not to unduly criticize government i'm not saying government is responsible for all the people who have died but if they had acted earlier it could have been reduced to an extent you know to an extent um so so they should have acted earlier what what is the plan they haven't told us what exactly the plan is i like what tunji bello commissioner for water for environment and water resources in lagos state has been saying uh, however from the federal level we're not getting information all right, we know we have the National Emergency Management Agency, but we still need more information. What is the plan? Okay, you're taking people from Bayelsa and River State, fine. What is the plan? Okay, and then um, for the president, he's told the Minister of Water Resources within the next 90 days to come up with a flood, uh, flood control plan. You know, what exactly is a flood control plan? You know, uh, when right now what we need is a disaster management plan. All right. Co Kofi, we have to go. Co Kofi, we really have to go. But you and I know that we can't entirely say that this is just a natural disaster. That's also a human factor to all of this. But that's the much that we can take at this point in time. We take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at the front pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us.